I don't want to set the world Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dawson's Roblox Game Reviews. Today we'll be looking at a game called Centara, made by the developer Classic Master Noob, who's also the developer of Dead Ahead. Although Dead Ahead is a naval game, he took a different approach with Centara and made it a World War 1 shooter game. So hop in the trenches and get ready to fix bayonets. As said previously, Centara is a World War 1 shooter with two opposing teams. The Sadist Faction and the Corvus Faction. Although these are fictional factions, they're obviously inspired by their real life counterparts. With the Sadist Faction representing the Untaunt, and the Corvus Faction representing the Central Powers. There are currently seven different classes as of recording this. The Rifleman, the Assault, the Grenadier, the Medic, the Flame Trooper, the Motorman, and the Officer. The Rifleman, Assault, Grenadier, and Flame Trooper are all offensive classes, whereas the Medic, Motorman, and Officer are support classes. There's only one category for Centara, and it's the shooter category. This game can be played in both third person and first person. In my experience, the rifle and the SMG are best used in third person, whereas the shotgun is best used in first person, and the flamethrower can be used in both first and third person depending on what you like. There's also the revolver, which kinda sucks in both third and first person, but we'll ignore that. As for melees, it's almost always better to use them in third person. Moving back to the guns, the damage feels very satisfying for all of them. All guns have a headshot multiplier, with the rifle and revolver doing 100 damage per headshot. That means it only takes one headshot from these rifles and revolvers to kill someone. There is a damage fall off depending on range, as well as a damage ramp up once you get closer, but those don't matter as long as you get a headshot. That being said, all the guns feel pretty balanced in my opinion. The one shot headshot factor is very satisfying, and forces players to focus cover above all else. This is incredible when placed in a World War 1 shooter, when the trench map has little to no cover, and the only cover you do have is being shot by artillery. That's why Centauri gets a shooter ring of 7.8 out of 10. Now let's move on to performance. This is where the game kind of suffers. For FPS, the game constantly goes up between 30 and 60 FPS depending on your graphics level. At max graphics, I was able to maintain 45 FPS, but did juggle quite a bit. But then there's the lag. The lag in this game is atrocious sometimes. Regardless of the map, the game has massive lag spikes every 20 to 30 seconds. These lag spikes only last a couple of seconds, which may not sound that bad, but with the headshot multiplier, all it takes is one bullet for you to be dead. These freaking lag spikes often screw over huge pushes during the game. With the entire team frozen for a couple of seconds, it's really easy to pick off everyone. The lag isn't unbearable, but it's enough to damage gameplay. That's why the performance score gets a 3.5 out of 10. Now let's move on to graphics. Where the performance lacks, the graphics really make up for it. From the impact of explosions to the gore of the bodies, the game really pushes the limits for what's possible for Roblox graphics. Although there's only three maps right now, each map is pretty damn good, with each map having no similarities with each other. To be quite honest, sometimes I just stood back and watched the explosions happen. Speaking of which, whenever an explosion did happen and it blew up someone next to you, you'd get a blood splatter on your screen. You also can go deaf end game if the explosion's too close to you, which isn't something necessary, but that low added detail really takes the cake. That's why Centaur gets a graphic score of 8.2 out of 10. Now finally, uniqueness. I'm gonna have to be honest here. The World War 1 shooter type genre has already been done so much before. With that being said, Centaur is different from those shooters. Most World War 1 shooters tend to go for the slower gameplay idea, where each shot counts, ammunition is limited, and overall you really have to think about where you're going. Centaur is a very fast paced type of shooter though. You still have to think about where you're going, but it still carries that rapid pace you have going on with the game. And it especially captures the brutality of World War 1, with the mindlessly grinding against the enemy, limbs being blown off, bodies going flying around, and especially at the end of the game where it doesn't even display the global stats for everyone, but the death toll overall. So for uniqueness, I'll give them a score of 7 out of 10. And before we announce the final score, let's talk about the criticism first. Note the game hasn't been out for too long, so don't be too harsh on them for this. This is just an overall list for me personally that could be worked on in the future. First off, there's no loadout display for classes. Although each class already has its name associated with their kit, it'd just be nice to see what the class actually has before taking it. 
I'd also like a class preview before deploying, so that way even if it's locked, I can see what the class actually has. Next, and probably the biggest issue it has right now, the lag. I'm not a game developer, but I do know that it's not as easy as just fixing lag, and that's it. So definitely take your time fixing the lag. Now for my next point, this only affects the trenches map. Please, make artillery not hit the spawns. There are too many instances where I spawn in, and before I could even move, I would die immediately to off-map artillery. And do note that artillery is not player controlled. The only thing that's player controlled that is kind of artillery shaped is the mortars, which aren't artillery by the way. I've also found an issue with the naval bombardment on the coastal map. For those of you who played this map, you know damn well what I'm talking about. The naval bombardment is way too intense on this map. It does share the issue with the trenches map where the naval bombardment hits your spawn, but even if it doesn't hit the spawn, it hits a general area and absolutely wipes the team out. Which may sound fun and all, but it really isn't. Every time there's a naval bombardment, we were hitting our spawn five different times before we could finally move our spawn. So roughly two minutes of constant naval bombardment, at which point the enemy team took the point because of the naval bombardment. The idea behind the naval bombardment is very cool. However, all I've seen it done is really frustrate players on the map. So maybe tone it down a bit and make it only happen when the enemy team is losing their last point. Now this next one might be controversial, but I'll say it anyways. Please add limited animation for armored cars the flame trooper and the mortar men. The armored car only shows up on the coastal map, but whenever I do see it, all it does is send the point and prevents the whole team from pushing the point. And because it has infinite ammunition, it just sits there and shoots everyone until a naval bombardment happens, which sometimes it doesn't even hit it. The flame trooper isn't that much of an issue when it comes to limited ammunition, but with infinite ammunition, I've seen people hold out in their holes for 5 to 10 minutes, just holding off the entire enemy team. And with its decently long range, all it takes is one single flame to let you on fire and kill you. Now this limited ammunition point is directly targeted towards this class alone, the Mortarmen. Especially on the trenches map, all it takes is one Mortarmen to hold off an entire enemy team. The Mortars themselves have a decently long range, and the Mortarmen can hide in a hole and just wait there for the team to push. They don't even have to wait for the enemy team to push, they can set up Mortars where the enemy team will push and hold them off. The most annoying fact about Mortarmen is that they have infinite ammunition and they can hide behind cover in their friendly lines. The only way to effectively deal with Mortarmen is to counter with your Mortars, which might be impossible when they already have their sights on you, or flank the trench, which is very hard to do when the entire our enemy team will be aiming at you trying to flank in open ground. And the only access way where there is no open ground in cover is the point that the Mortarman's holding. I'd say about the Mortarman for me, because if you think the Mortarman currently is bad, Think about it when every class could have it as long as they had enough points to buy at the inventory shop. Now these next two points are self-explanatory so I'm not going to detail them too much. Bayonets for rifles. And lastly, there's only two modes and three maps right now. I can't reiterate enough that this game is very new and hasn't been out for a long and it's also made by a solo developer to my knowledge. So again, this list is just something I've found issues with the game and can be worked on over time, not all in one day or one week. With that being said, Centaur gets a final score of 6.6 out of 10. It's mostly the performance dragging the game down so don't don't worry about that score too much. If the lag issues got ironed out, this game would definitely be a 7.5 out of 10 at least. But that's all from me for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and make sure to tell me what game I should review next. This is Dawson from Dawson's Roblox Game Reviews, and I'll see you next time.